Hallo, treue Unterstützer des passiven Lernens. Wir sind hier auf 149.202.107.134 der Anarchie-Server mit dem Namen Laser Gurkenland. Und ähm, ja, wie schon in der Ammoderation angepriesen, passives Lernen. Was ist denn für heute geplant? Wir haben Programming in Rust. Ähm, Video Nummer 1, Warm-Up von ähm, J.M. Archer. Ein Video von 2015 ähm, über Rust Programming. Also es wird ein richtiges Hands-on Video. Ich habe da mal schon reingeglänzt und das ist äh, ja das wird äh, das wird happig hier damit zu kommen. Und ähm, mir geht es auf den Sack, dass ich dieses Wort happig die ganze Zeit verwende. Aber wir werden uns das jetzt mal geben und schauen, wie viel man so äh, ja, passt die für ein Wissen aufnehmen kann. Und dann will ich sagen, uh, let's go. Alright, so. Boah, ist der laut. This is a bit of a warm up for a programming screencast. Screencast. Never done anything like this before, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Maybe it'll come in handy to some people. I don't really know. Ja, yeah, hier, hi, danke dafür. This is just a warm up. So we're going to start with something retardedly simple. Fizzbuzz, which everybody claims half the programmers in the world can't actually do. Using a language called Rust. You may not be familiar with it, it's a little bit on the new side, but it's basically C++ with safety features added so that you can't actually blow up your computer by accident. Of course you can still do it on purpose. This is an editor called DI. I'm using it basically because my home machine here is actually a Windows box and Windows has only moderate support from Rust so far. You can do it, but I have no idea why you would. Um, was ist die Mission? I don't know. Okay, dann würde ich sagen, let's go. Hoppa. So, what I'm actually doing here is I'm connecting to a VPS, Virtual Private Server, hosted by the very, very nice people at uh, DigitalOcean. Hmm. This is a rem remote machine that I'm connecting to via PuTTY and Secure Shell. And uh, it works pretty well. It's not the fastest machine, but it's also not all that expensive either. It goes crazy in orange because I have the visual bell turned on in putty so that it doesn't make noise every time I hit a button, it doesn't do the right thing. Also, der verwendet putty? Es sieht richtig slick aus irgendwie. Window border nicht oder Squirtsky noch, keine Ahnung. Rust has something called an algebraic data type. Of course, it's not called an algebraic data type in Rust, it's called an enum, which makes no sense. Uh, in C and other C like languages, you have enums like this, where actually it's just a list of options. Um, Rust is a little bit more complicated than that because you can do things like this where the options can carry values. Oh no, what's the man lava I'm uh but my evil plan is not to do anything all that complicated at the moment. The fun thing is you could put any kind of value in this email. Which comes in handy when the value that you put into it is a struct of your own design. For right now, though, all we really want is Ich hoffe, man hört mich nicht essen. Es wäre gross. Value, biz, and buzz. 
I suppose we also want this. The idea here being that all of the values will have one of these types and only one of these types. range notation. I'm going to just say 1 to 101. In order to map this, I actually have to put it in parentheses. Parentheses are not necessary if you're not going to map the value, but I am going to map the value. So that's the whole program, except for Brauch ich das Teil one tiny little detail. We need this function right here. I don't know. It maps everything to a fizzbuzz value. Why don't you remind me to change the name of that enum from a random enum name to a fizzbuzz value? unsigned 64-bit integer. Uh, I'm using an unsigned integer here because I'm not interested in negative values at the moment, so there's no reason to waste time with an integer. I'm using a 64-bit integer because the machine that I'm working on is a 64-bit machine, and actually the 64-bit integer will run faster for most things on this machine. I could go with this instead, a U size, uh, that creates an integer that is pointer size for the specific machine that you're working on. And it would make a 64-bit integer on this machine, but everybody gets a little bit up in arms when you try that because what it does is it changes sizes from one machine to another, which means, let's say that we want to do fizzbuzz through 5 billion. On this computer it would work on a 32-bit computer, it would blow up in your face because the integer would wrap before you got done. Doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference, but, um, well, reality sucks sometimes, you know? Um, I'm not really familiar with how to pause a recording in this, but I wanted to look and see how it was done. Not gonna work, clearly. <coughs> <laughs> What do you think of my color scheme here? I kind of like this. Uh, it took me forever to decide that this is what I wanted to look like, but uh, I don't know. The only complaint that I have about this setup is this oh, string baby. literal here is the same color as everything else, which I find silly. I'll say that from Bim Zintas. We're going to take advantage of something called a mass statement here which is probably the single coolest thing in Rust, as far as I'm concerned. Um, hmm, I'm gonna come here. Match statements usually go based on value or type. In this case, the type is always going to be U64, so that's not gonna work for us. So, we're going to match on N for all values of N. That's what this first part means. And we're only going to take this branch if n is a multiple of 15. This actually won't work. Because the enum fizzbuzz value is actually declared right up there. And that means that we have to include the name of it, since we're not actually importing it. I found out a little bit. 
it's only two, but uh, nothing I can do about it. Too late. The guys who actually designed Rust are big believers in being explicit whenever it's possible, and that makes sense in a lot of ways. It means that you can look at a piece of code and see what it does without having to know a lot of knowledge about what goes on behind the scenes. You do have to know a lot of behind the scenes knowledge to be able to write Rust, because you don't know what to write otherwise, but you mm. don't have to have it in order to read it. I find it's extremely anstrengend to read. Because everything the program is doing is actually right there on the screen in front of you, which is kind of nice. I don't know. Aber vielleicht nach ein paar Videos jetzt hier auf dem zweiten Bildschirm darüber starren, ähm, geht es auch weg, dass ich das anstrengend zu lesen finde. Das ist ja der Plan hier. Weil ich oh, immer struggle, wenn ich Rust lese. So, so here we've covered n for all values of n, where n is a multiple of 5, and n for all values of n, where n is a multiple of 3. And lastly, we just spit out n because screw it. That is actually the entire function, which is a little bit surprising if you have messed around with languages like C or C sharp. There's no return statement. The value of this function is simply this. The match Ruby expression. Style. It's not a statement unless you add uh, implicit return. That. Semicolon has a very special function in Rust. It doesn't actually delimit the end of a line. It says this is a statement, not an expression. But in this case, we want the value of this expression, so we won't convert it into a statement. This code will kind of work, but not in its current state. What we'll actually need in order to make it really work is that, which is the debug format specifier. We don't have the show format specifier for the Edoom FCV just yet. So let's see what happens when we try to compile this. I'm going to use just Rust C as a compiler, which I think stands for Rust Compiler, which is extremely creative, as you can tell. Um, normally I would use Cargo, but this is not part of a Cargo repository. So there's no point in trying that because it's not going to work. Thanks for explaining but what cargo is, Down but so I just understand is this something like CMake or you need a CMake list file or a cargo Doesn't file to make it a little bit bigger. <coughs> it's like the build system. Mismatched types. 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 Mismatched Yeah. Uh, let's try this again. Let's try this one more time after making the screen a little bit clearer. Um, format debug is not implemented for the type FZV, so it looks like there's really no point in us actually trying the debug's format specifier because it's not going to work. Let's see here. Vim allows you to skip forward and back by words, which is what I keep trying to do, and it keeps missing this format specifier because nothing in it looks even remotely like a word. It's hard to blame it, but it's also kind of annoying. Let's try deriving uh, the appropriate formatting nonsense. Yeah, this with the word Oh my, I have another one reingesetzt. Whoa. Rust will attempt to write some code for you just for the hell of it. I use clear, which is apparently uh, a command, as well as a keyboard shortcut. You type in clear, and it clears the screen like that. Actually, it's not cleared. It just scrolls up, which sounds silly, but it's seriously right there. But I use that to give myself mm -hmm. more room to read the debug results. Well, my daughter. Also. Oh, yeah. 
Aber wenn man Steuerung Shift K macht, auch nicht. Steuerung Shift L. Hm. Es gab doch irgendeinen Shortcut, wo man äh, wo man das es gab doch einen, der wirklich alles löscht, den ganzen Buffer. Command K und äh, auf Mac auf jeden Fall. So basically it's saying that show is not what we're supposed to use here anymore. Okay, great. Sounds wonderful. I'm going to type CW to change the word there. And I'm going to put in uh, display, which I think is the thing that replaced show. Mm -hmm. Rust is still under development very slightly. You can't just assume that everything works the same way it did last time. It's a little bit annoying now then. Display does not even exist. Is this in display? <laughs> Let's see here. Custom traits. Apparently, I have kind of what to do not a thing because it's never even heard of it. Um, we're going to try debug. What is he doing, man? Seriously. Which works. Mm, display is totally a thing. Why don't you lie to me about that? Trait core format display is not implemented for type of CV. Well, we're just gonna have to do it the hard way. Here we go. Start with IMPL, which is the keyword for this. Imp. I don't know why they could go there because that's less humorous than imp. Basically, they're not very. They're not into fun as a thing when it comes to programming. I mean, it's fun to be finished. It's not necessarily fun to write Rust. It's fun to write Ruby, it's, for me it's fun to write C-sharp. Rust is very business-like, it's, it's no bullcrap for this language. Display. I forget what the display so trait the line here actually requires. I don't know. We'll find out. He'll probably tell us whenever we try to do this and we fail. Totally. leaving the code on the tiny side of the screen right now because it's just kind of tiny and cute and these error messages are massive undeclared trait name display nonsense okay I didn't declare it but it does exist standard format display uh. um, I know over here on the right hand side, if you look, it says core format display, which is really kind of dumb. Apparently, at some previous point in Rust's history, standard was called core. And standard back then stood for something entirely unrelated. I don't really know. I don't think that the old standard libraries still exist as a part of Rust standard library. But if you see core, you can just kind of replace that and then it with standard. And usually you're right. Sounds a little silly, but like I said, it's still under work. Um, not all trait items implemented missing format. So, the name for that function is actually format. Don't know what color it turns. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that you really should just try to look up, I imagine. But, uh, I don't do that. <coughs> At least not a fun of my answer. Format has a self-declaration in the trait, but not in the implementation. What that means is that it's actually a, a method rather than a function, or at least it's called with method syntax. And self is uh, the item that you are calling the function on. You'll see what that looks like eventually. Um, say you have, well, here's an example. Um, this. 
this thing right here, this is what we call an iterator. Uh, it iterates over a range from 1 to 100. Map is actually uh, it's an extension on an iterator, but it is actually method syntax. That's why there's a dot connecting it to the iterator. What map does is it takes self, in this case the iterator, and a function to create an iterator of the type of new items. No, I can't find it. Uh, we're not actually going to use the format function, but format is used by print line to invoke whatever it needs to display trade for. I don't really know what it needs to display trade for. It needs it to, rent, to write the, uh, the value to the console, basically. The format has one parameter, but the declaration in format display format has two. It'd be nice if they would actually show me the declaration. Um, what they have to have. Which is, okay, just down my top. Nice, right? I just noticed that there's another error being printed at the very end that I wasn't looking at that uh, refers to this line right here. Basically, we were passing back a bare value for the final branch of the match expression, and that's not correct. We need a value wrapped in this value struct thing here. So now that oh, here, oh, it's actually like a shot. Mm. Oh, resolve name because we forgot to leave that value there with uh, the proper stuff. In this case, FCV. Der macht das so hart langsam. Also wenn ich mich nebenbei was anderes machen würde, ich würde den Typ niemals packen. Aber so ist richtig angenehm. Schöne Geschwindigkeit. So what we're gonna do is give up, <laughs> give up trying to guess. That is what's going on here. And just look up the display trait on doc.rustline.org, which comes in really handy. Um, hopefully you can see this when I drag it over on the screen. I don't really know how that's going to work. This is a stable trait, which means we should be able to use it whenever we want to, which comes in handy. Uh, display has a single function format. FMT, which takes and self and immutable formatter and returns a result of type unit and error. Um, not going to get into what exactly that means, but basically it means that this is a void function, but it returns a result. That's it. So it's going to do its work without returning you the actual work. It's going to return a uh, thing that says what it accomplished when you did the work. No, what did I break? Responder. Uh, Vim has a very long memory. I was working on something that had a responder in it a while ago, and apparently it hasn't forgotten that yet. Now, the fun thing is that formatter is probably going to throw an error. I think it's actually standard format formatter. But I don't know that. See this right here? These two parentheses? That is a type. It is a special type in Rust. It's the closest thing Rust has to null. If you're familiar with a type it's right here, these two parentheses, that is a type. It is a special type in Rust. It's the closest thing Rust has to null. If you're familiar with other languages like C and C sharp, null means nothing. There's nothing of value here. Unit actually means there's something here, but it hasn't got a value. Um, let's say this match expression currently has a value of FCV, some variant of FCV. Now, now that I've added the semicolon to the end of it, it has a value of unit, which is the type of all statements. It's 
why I said that this doesn't really have a return value. If it's successful, all you're going to get back is unit. Um, if it's unsuccessful, you'll get back that, which is a lot less fun to get back, so you don't want to hand that back too often. This formatter actually needs a name. You're just going to go with F. Ah, we're out of space. Uh, one thing we can do with Tmux here is we can actually just change the size of a pane. Comes in really handy. Uh, I don't think that Tmux by default has uh, settings for that. Well, but right. I'll show you mine real quick if you want to see them. Uh, Prefix and arrow key on pane to resize. This takes us to the tmux configuration file in my home directory. That's what the tilde at the front of the line there means. Um, so the resize buttons I have set up are actually the up, down, left, right buttons from Vim because I use those all the time anyway and it came in handy. I have the prefix modified to J because it's an easy button to get to versus B, which is not. And I J. have uh, a bunch of other Nothing there is. Oh, with two hands and prefix, yeah. or what? It's fine. Clock mode color green? J for prefix. It's not green, is it? It's very much orange down there at the bottom right. Yeah, totally is. <coughs> but I found Control K to resize up, Control J to resize down. This C here, that's what that actually stands for, is Control. I think it would be C, except that there's a dash behind it. Don't even ask. Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to use the Q command to quit, so that if I actually did make any changes, it will gripe and tell me. Actually, I could just do this. This means quit no matter what, and it will discard any changes that I accidentally made. Which is good, because I didn't really mean to make any changes. Um, so here's the uh, format. Uh, I believe what we have to do is call a function on the formatter itself. Well, I don't actually remember how to do that either. <coughs> so we're going to go to the documentation again. this says, we're actually going to call a macro, that's what the exclamation point here means, called write. We're going to pass to that a formatter and a format string, uh, and the values that are required by the format string. Now here's where it gets complicated. Anything you do with FizzBuzz is based on what the actual FizzBuzz value is. Because you can't print 5 for 5, you have to print buzz for no apparent reason. So, hey, you forgot to tell me that I screwed that up. FizzBuzz is right only for the first one. This is supposed to be buzz. This. Wie viele, ähm, oh scheiße, wie heißen diese Leute? Die, die Leute, die Jobinterviews machen, wie heißen die? Die, äh, die 
Interviewer. Scheiße, da gibt's doch sicher einen Namen oh. für, oder? Fun fact. Rust will actually complain at us for doing this. Because you're not making use of the value in, it's going to tell you you've created a variable and then ignored it. Which is a dangerous thing to do in code because what will eventually happen is somebody's going to come along and edit your code and use that variable and it's going to be stale. Because you're not making use of it, you're not going to maintain it. And basically by the time they get around to using it, the behavior of that variable will be, for all practical intents and purposes, unspecified. Okay. Ähm, ja, jedenfalls, ich frage mich, wie viele von den Leuten, die die Interviews äh, machen, also halten, Fistbus überhaupt kennen. Values. Ich bin mir ziemlich sicher, dass im IT-Sektor irgendwo eine Menge Firmen existieren, die Leute einstellen und... Ähm, wenn man dann ein Interview hat und den, den Dude fragt, yo, macht in eurer Firma auch ganz viel Fisspass? Und dann sagen die, äh, was ist Fisspass? <lacht> oder? Also was meint ihr? Also ich frage mich gerade, wie viele Leute es da so gibt, oder die äh, die Interviews betreiben und ähm, das nicht kennen. Ähm, ja, mal abgesehen von können, einfach nur kennen. The reason that I stored the values, on the other hand, is basically that at some later point you may want to get the sum of all of the multiples of three or five or both, and not having those values stored with their variant types would be really annoying. We are passing in because that's the only thing we actually require. Oh my god, is there code? Luckily, in is a U64 which already has displayed a function. Can we not say that it's simple to read? We're not supposed to return it out of here. But each of these right calls actually returns this. So we're still going to make a match an expression, not a statement. Let's see if this works. Oh my god, like that. Uh-oh. Undeclared type formatter. What a surprise. Told you that was going to happen, didn't I? Okay, I should do this easy way. Okay, um... Ja. Undeclared type error. Habe ich das Homie mitgenommen? Nein. Let me look real quick. Ey, ich bin so. Was ist mit mir? Was ich tue, believe it or not. Okay, click on that. And I'll take you there. Standard format error. So. these things in alphabetical order because apparently I am incredibly, incredibly insane. It doesn't make any difference at all, but what, else, what other order are you going to put them in? Precedence? I sometimes try to put them in order of precedence, like which one is the most important? That one goes at the front. But then you're stuck trying to decide which one's the most important, and it's just a huge waste of time, really. Hmm. And I can't find FCV. Ich war ein Typen. Er ist ja pure Entertainment einfach. Ja, ich werde euch einen neuen Trick zeigen. Das ist gut, oder? Wir werden die Seite des Bottoms sehen. Präsent S, F, Z, B, F, Z, D. Global. Replace das Ding auf der Linken mit dem Ding auf der Rechten. Warte, was hat er gemacht? Put the thing on the right. S, F, Z, B. We're going to watch the bottom of the screen. Pre 
Prozent S. Ah ja, Prozent. Ich wähle mal alles aus, weil ich vergessen habe, wie man das Ganze. Oh, Mann. Ja. Replace the thing on the left with the thing on the right. Everywhere. I can't believe that worked on the first try. Ne? Kennt ihr ja, wenn Substitution ist. Alright. Prozent fürs ganze Teil und dann S Substitute pro Bar. Dann noch G für die. Für äh, mehrere Occurrences pro Zeile. Und bin ich gerade wild drauf? Ich glaube schon. Däh. Nein, kein Idiot. Wunderbar. Und das hat er auch so entschieden. Da gibt es noch mehr Videos von. Äh, Habe ich vorher mal gesehen. Ich hätte nicht gedacht, dass das äh, so abgeht. Klar, ich habe circa nichts mitgenommen aus dem Video und Rust ist immer noch genauso mystical zu mir. Zu mir? To me? Alter, weil die ist mit meinem Language am Bean. Ähm, aber ja, nee, doch, es geht ab. Also ich denke, in der nächsten Episode geht es weiter mit äh, einer Folge von J.M. Archer. Äh, das ist hier Programming in Rust. Äh, Warm-up. Boah, 40.000 Aufrufe hat das Video. Irgendwie dachte ich, dass das, äh, dass das weniger viral gegangen ist. Ähm, aber ich meine, es ist auch schon von 2015, also es ist Early Rust Adapter und wenn man nach äh, Rust Learning und Tutorials und so weiter unter Creative Commons auf YouTube sucht, gibt es eigentlich auch nicht viele Alternativen, aber ich meine, wer sucht schon Videos mit dem Creative Commons Filter? I don't know. Aber ähm, ja, so viel dazu. Wir sind hier auf Lasergurkenland, dem Anarchie Vanilla Minecraft Server ähm, mit der IP-Adresse 149.202.137.134. Ähm, alternativ gibt es auch die Domain sillyhoon.com, wenn euch das einfacher zu tippen ist ohne T, weil ich immer beim Chatten ein T hinmache. Boah, schlimm. Ähm, ja, und dann würde ich sagen, war es das für diese Episode und wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge wieder.